Hi, my name is Keith Quill, and together with Susan Bergen, I'm presenting your paper on Promoting a Growth Mindset in CS1, Does One Size Fit All? A Pilot Study at IDC 2020. Computer science education in Ireland has typically one of the highest attrition rates of all third level courses, and it has been consistently so for the past decade. This high attrition rate is also echoed in many other jurisdictions. This work also forms part of a longitudinal body of research to predict students at risk of failing or dropping out of introductory programming courses called Press Sharp. This intervention forms um, the next part of our research that once we identify students who are at risk of failing or dropping out, how can we address this concern? The related literature seems to be quite light on using a growth mindset as an intervention in CS1. The literature there has shown mixed outcomes in CS1, but some success where applying the intervention has shown that performance may increase. However, the growth mindset may not have changed across the study. Recently, Carl Dweck, the founder of the, of the construct mindset, and Jaeger reflected on two areas of mindset interventions. Jaeger in particular highlighted that mindset is applicable to some student cohorts more than others. And this forms the foundation of our research questions. Our first research question is essentially a replication of some of the studies out there in CS1. Can an intervention promoting a growth mindset improve performance in an introductory programming course? This aims to replicate um, interventions such as Kutz et al. Our second research question is formed off the basis of Jaeger's finding last year. Does promoting a growth mindset have the same effect on all students or are certain student cohorts affected differently? And the authors hypothesize that anecdotally there might be a correlation between mindset or programming self-efficacy or they might be measuring a similar underlying phenomena or construct. That's just an, um, an anecdotal hypothesis. Our data collection began in 2016-2017, which forms our intervention group with a sample size of 46 students. This was conducted over two institutions, a university and a community college. And we also had access to the same two institutions in the previous year who took part in the press study as, an inter, as a control group with a sample size of 55. This was the intervention, the survey data was collected across three stages, stage one, stage two, and stage three. Stage one was about four to six hours um, into the introductory programming course. This is when the data was collected for press. So we applied the intervention just after stage one. So we recorded data for both the intervention and control group before the intervention was applied. Stage two is at the end of CS1 and stage three is at the end of the academic year. This paper focuses on the differences between stage one and stage two and performance in introductory programming course. Before we began, we used the data from stage one before the intervention was applied to apply or investigate a population analysis where we compared both the control and intervention group. The only statistically significant difference that was found was the gender balance, where in 2015-16, the number of female participants was two, and 2016-2017, the number of female participants was six. But other than that, there was no statistically significant difference between the attributes measured, and you can find these presented in the paper. The methodology was drawn from the literature, where at each of the remaining 12 weeks of CS1 course, we dedicated lecture time to promoting a growth mindset in CS1. This was about 10 to 15 minutes per week. We applied a per personal experience, worth ethic and performance, and testimonials to try to promote a growth mindset. Quarterly then, every three weeks, we presented research based on the work of Dweck, a K to 12 second level primary school, the related literature on grit and neuroplasticity to reinforce the promotion of growth mindset on our weekly lectures. Finally, we focused on feedback where we praised the process and not the person. And we really focused on giving detailed and constructive feedback to students for each assessment or assignment in CS1 where students could understand where perhaps they could improve um, their grade. The results between um, the intervention and the control cohort, well, the intervention cohort saw a significant increase in performance. This was both with raw results and dichotomous pass and fail. Effect size was also examined, where Miller reports an effect size of 0.2 to be statistically significant. The effect size in this course uh, between the intervention and control cohort had an effect size of 0.57. So this was very promising early on. Then we looked at, or we investigated, the growth mindset change in the intervention group between stage one and stage two. We did see a slight increase towards a growth mindset. This is reported in the literature, 
but the difference was not statistically significant. And this is what we uh, found in the literature, in the literature review, that while performance may have increased, the growth mindset did not change between the start or the end of the course, or in our case, stage one and stage two. The growth mindset survey was taken from Darnica's survey, which was adapted from the Dweck survey. Programming self-efficacy between stage one and stage two did show some change, but as expected with the Press Sharp study, as self-efficacy is not temporarily stable. Students with a high big uh, initial reporting of self-efficacy reduced, students with a, a middle range self-efficacy had little change, and students with a low self-efficacy saw their self-efficacy increase. And we know this might be the case where self-efficacy aligns towards the end of the course at stage two. So the results overview, the performance increased, which was very promising. This replicates the study by Kutz et al. And the correlation between mindset and performance was not strong. And this was also found in the literature, of, uh, which reported a Pearson correlation of 0 0.4. Self-efficacy showed a strong correlation with performance as expected and as reported in the Press Sharp study. So to, to examine the second research question, we next looked at Jaeger's reporting that sub-cohorts may be affected differently by mindset intervention. So we introduced clustering to the um, analysis of stage two and stage one, where we use k-means and an unsupervised method to determine the number of clusters. And the details of this can be found in the paper. When we ran automatic clustering, we used age and change in mindset. Three clusters were determined. What was really interesting here, even and just acknowledging that these changes were not statistically significant, but they are insights that younger students seemed to show a, a, an increase in a mindset, whereas older students actually see uh, actually seem to see a decrease in mindset. And while these are not statistically significant, this insight might show or might lead to future investigations that might examine that some cohorts are affected significantly different than others. Secondly, we clustered by performance. We also measured mindset and programming self-efficacy. Programming self-efficacy scale is inverted due to the data reduction technique applied, and these details again can be found in the paper. What we see is low performing students see the most increase or the most change in mindset and programming self-efficacy. Whereas um, for self-efficacy, high performing students or middle performing students see a reduction in self-efficacy, whereas middle performing or middle ranging performing students see the largest increase in mindset. And again, these insights need further investigation to unpack these findings, but again shows that not all student cohorts may experience the intervention in the same way. We also cluster by mindset and programming, where each cluster uh, on the left bottom diagram are, are color coded and then we ordered each cluster by programming self-efficacy. What this shows that for each cluster of mindset there's a range of programming self-efficacy. On the right hand side we just average the programming self-efficacy for each cluster and, and you see that there is a correlation. This correlation reported was actually quite high as uh, uh, with Pearson correlation. Again, what this shows is, is that different groups of students might, again, have different or varying self-efficacy. Further work, again, is required to unpack this, as this is very preliminary results. Threats to validity. These findings are interesting and do warrant further investigation and future direction. However, the sample size was small. Also, as not all students attended stage one to stage two, some of the investigations had a lower sample size than 46, whereas these, for each investigation, these are reported in the paper. Not all students were present for each stage, so again, this is a threat to validity. The mindset intervention itself was developmental and also Myself, who delivered both courses in the community college and in the university, I exhibit growth mindset traits, and this may also affect the intervention. However, I was the lecturer for both cohorts for both years. So what are the big take homes? Growth mindset may be of value to the, the CS Ed community. However, certain student cohorts may be affected in different ways, and one size may not fit all. And while the clustering technique was very useful and may be applicable to other domains, this has highlighted a need for further and deeper investigation. From here, I'd like to thank you. And if this is the live or virtual presentation from here, I'll take any questions. Thank you very much for your time.